and I'm going to switch back over to the PowerPoint presentation, and we'll just get started. Um, can you also let me know if you've received your download notes, the class notes? Maybe you can let me know that over in the chat message window as well. Ah, good. Okay. That's great. So I'm going to just move forward. Okay, so today we're actually going to cover, if there's a lot of content that I'm going to be covering today, a lot more than I was um, when I first had the brainstorm of actually doing this class. I didn't realize how much information there really would be. So um, I'm going to show, share with you a brief history of why I want to share this with you, a sneak peek at the real numbers of um, exactly how I'm doing this for $30 a month, and the, of course, as promised, the exact tools and techniques I'm using right now. And then hopefully we're going to have time at the end for some questions and answers. I really do hope we have time for that. So um, I'm going to just move forward. Um, so these are the tools that I'll be going through throughout the call. And it's the communication section. I'll just let you read that quickly. And, um, and then I'm going to jump into the next. So just briefly, um, when, I decided, when I was working in my accounting QuickBooks consulting business, um, I really knew that I needed to leverage my business to another level without just trading my time for dollars consistently. So I started working on creating like an ebook or some kind of course, but there seemed to be gaps missing for me all the time. I didn't know how other people were actually delivering this kind of content. And it kind of took me down this path, this discovery path of searching for ways to do it without um, maybe, maybe the easier way would have been to sit down with someone who was actually doing it and, and find out exactly what they were doing. But for some reason, I didn't. So I kept trying and sampling different things. And, um, and then over time, I learned to actually get products online and have them ready to sell and have the delivery process done. And there's still so many things that I need to learn and that I'm learning along the way. Um, products change and there's so much. There are so many new tools and techniques to use. But um, what I've found is that I can do most of it with free and online tools. And over the last recent while, I found that a lot of people are really looking for this answer and they don't know necessarily where to go to get it and they waste a lot of time online looking just like I did. So, um, so I decided that I would just kind of open it all up and share it with you instead of, um, instead of kind of keeping it hidden or even just giving you little bits and pieces at a time because I don't think that really solves the problem. At least it didn't for me. So that's a little brief part of that. Um, oh, I'm going to just have to pause for a really quick second. I've run out of battery charge on my laptop. I'll be right back. If you have a question, just drop it in the chat window. Okay, that was a little embarrassing. So my laptop just died. Um, can you still hear me again? Just check in and say yes. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. So here we go. These are just the actual numbers of what I spend on on anything related to my online business. So I do have a phone line at home that I use as well. I have car payments. I have all of those other things that you probably need for running your other offline business. But this is the portion that is strictly about my online business, um, not including phone and um, phone and internet, for example, um, or insurance and that kind of thing. So. I, the only area that I actually spend money on is my host gator fees, my domain name fees. Um, I spend something on Skype. I buy prepaid credit cards so that I can purchase things online. So there's some fees associated with that. Um, 
I take myself out to Starbucks so that I can work in a coffee shop every once in a while. And, um, and I buy long distance phone cards so that I can attend teleseminars like this and learn different things. And then another thing that I spend money on is um, Jing, which is it's, um, it's an, a way for me to record videos or tutorials online. And I've upgraded to the pro version and it was $12. So that's the numbers part of it for me. So jumping right into um, the communication section. Looks like we've got a few extra people on the line too, which is fantastic. Uh, welcome, Laura and Ruth. Good to see you. Um, so jumping into communication. So the communication strategy that I use includes having a voice mailbox and automated message systems. These are like seriously all free, except for the ones that I mentioned earlier. Um, so you can get automated messages, uh, free fax to send fax, faxes, a toll-free number, um, an incoming fax line, and conference lines. And I can give you access to the actual hyperlinks to all of this information um, and conference lines. But just so that you know that all of this stuff is available for free in really high quality, um, con really high quality um, formats. And um, most of them have some either either as supported or they're generating revenue from another method. Um, like for example, the conference lines charge they charge um, a higher long distance rate to the phone companies, and that's how they earn their money. So everyone who calls into a bridge line is paying long distance to that specific number, and that's where they make their money. So they are able to offer it to us, the um, creator of content, for free. And so moving on to creation and writing. And of course, for me, a lot of it is about writing. And so that's why I focused in on this area of it. Um, for other people, you'll be doing other things that, you know, your creation is going to be something else. Um, but the way that I go about building my content is using these tools that I've got on the screen here. So I primarily work in Microsoft Office. And um, I also use something called PDF 995 to store things as a, a PDF if I'm not in a Microsoft Office product that does save as PDFs already. And then um, I use Jing, which I mentioned earlier, to record videos, tutorials, um, even quick little, um, if I want to communicate something with a client, I'll just do a quick little video of it and send it over to them. I've done that in the Facebook groups and things like that as well. Um, and then I can also take those Jing videos and put them into Windows Movie Maker and put um, an opening section and an ending section um, and make it sort of tidier, like a, like a nice little video. Um, when I'm creating uh, logos or, or graphics for eBooks that I'm working on, I will often just open them up in Paint and make the Microsoft Paint that's on your computer. In a Mac, there's a very similar version of this as well. And I um, modify what I'm working on. Sometimes I'm writing, it's just as simple as having a brilliant idea at the moment and being on my Blackberry and just typing it up. I've written 750 word articles in Blackberry notes while I've been, you know, just um, suntanning or something silly. And I'll use this little calculator to help me work out whether or not this is going to be some kind of viable business option or or to help out with other, I don't know, business decisions, I suppose. And I use Clipart a lot, completely free as well, and modify the way those Clipart images look so that they become more uh, unique and personal to me. And then the last one on this creation phase is Adobe Reader. So when I'm creating, hello, <laughs> when I'm creating a, um, an ebook, for example, I'll save the ebook in uh, as a PDF, and then I turn on the voice reader, and, and excuse me, <clears throat> turn on the voice reader and allow Adobe to actually read that book back to me, so that I can hear if there's any grammatical errors or or that kind of thing. Um, the last person who just picked up the call is there a possibility to mute? I'm not sure if we have that option in here, but I'm hearing some extra background noise. And just keep going. 
<laughs> the next one is marketing, advertising, and PR. Um, I have a few ways that I actually go about doing my marketing, my advertising, my PR. I use MailChimp, um, also completely free for the first 2,000 subscribers. And it's working really well for me. I, really, I, I wasn't fully embracing it until probably January of this last year, but it's been working very well. Um, and Facebook and Twitter, I use that to make connections with business people. Um, using our search.twitter.com for following threads of conversations. And I manage both of those, Facebook and Twitter, with Hootsuite. Um, so I'm able to bring, if you haven't seen that yet, um, it's worth taking a look at, also free. And you can bring in your Facebook and your Twitter feed. Um, another thing that I use quite actively is Help a Reporter Out. And it's also a free service that you can sign up for. You get three emails a day. And what you're finding out is information that reporters or people in the news are looking for information about. They, they're looking for content. And if you have something that you can contribute or you can take a spin on your business and turn that into something that's valuable content for them, they, can very, they very often will publish it for you. So that's been something that I've been using now since um, I think 2004. And it's been very, very helpful in my business. Um, Facebook groups can be a really interesting place to actually do research on what your customers are really looking for. So you can just ask some really simple questions if you're in a group of an interest group. Um, ask questions about what it is that your ideal clients are looking for. And, um, and of course, you can do some marketing there as well. Creating guest blog, blog posts is another avenue, as well as um, uh, tracking your traffic. The reason I mentioned this is because um, if you're able to track your traffic through, there's a, se several different tools that I use. Um, bit.ly, you've probably seen that shortening tracker type thing. But um, if you set up an account with them, you can actually track how many people are looking at the, um, the thing that you're promoting. So for example, for this uh, online for 30, I, had a, I used a bit.ly um, address. And I was able to see every single time we were looking at it, I don't know who they were specifically, but I could see what country they were in and see what time of day that they were looking at it. And, I could tell whether it was related to um, some advertising I was doing. So it can be really useful information to help you decide what to move forward with, where you're wasting time, et cetera, et cetera. And then I also use online class classifieds. I use them to um, promote a new product, but I also do the, use them for um, job advertising, but then also mention something about my business. And it just kind of creates a nice circle effect. Okay, moving on to customer management. Um, I use scheduling tools online to help my clients book appointments with me. I haven't found the absolute best one yet. I, I would love to find one that syncs back and forth with Google because I use it to help me manage a lot of other things, which you'll see in the productivity tool. Um, but recently just started using something called, I think it's called Bookio. <laughs> And um, there's a free version as well as some paid versions. And it's, I think it's working good so far. So I'll let you know on that one if it keep, keeps working. And I use Windows Live Mail to manage my email. I can add in a, as many email addresses as, as I want. And it allows me to work online and offline. And it keeps all of the folders intact within my Windows Live Mail account. So I don't have to be online all the time. I can have separate windows open just like I would with Outlook. And, um, and bring in more than one email account. So that's my, my favorite for that. And um, I use forms online to, to gather information about clients and customers and then have it delivered to me. And then, of course, there's also the um, FAQ section on websites to give information to the customers. I feel like I'm going too fast. Is everyone keeping up? Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, bit fast, Laura. I'm going to slow down a little bit. Um, I have so many pages to go through, so <laughs> I feel a little bit of that pressure, but that's cool. So I'm going to pop over to website and design. There's no way we can cover all of this, this part specifically in this call today. But um, I really recommend using WordPress. And from WordPress.org, not the WordPress.com website, 
um, so, and having it hosted specifically on your own personal server so that you can track all of your traffic so that your backlinks for your advertising and, and uh, your SEO rankings are all um, coming back to you so that you're building your own virtual real estate um, so that it's something that you can take with you over a long period of time. I um, <clears throat> With my first business, Red to Black, I was able to bring my business up to a number one Google ranking in the first year or so. And it kind of stayed there within, for at least six years. And then I let some things drop off. I switched platforms and my links dropped away. And now it doesn't um, stay out there. So it was partly because I was on a, uh, I had moved to a non-hosted server with, anyway, long story. Um, <laughs> I really recommend doing it in a way that you own this property um, because it is your property and it's part of your business. So. Um, having your own domain name, I think, is really important. Uh, the hosting service, and then using WordPress. I mean, there's other ways certainly to do it, but this is a way that um, is free and quite simple. There are so many website themes that are available, even premium themes that are free. So most of the premium themes you have to buy, but there are some that you can search for that are completely free as well, and a great way to get started while you're getting your branding, branding and message fixed. Um, as well as creating forums. So it's also um, when you have a good hosting package, even just that 995 one that I have through HostGator, I'm able to just quickly turn on a plugin to create a forum. Um, BB Press is the one that I like. I can create a forum that um, that actually will allow like people to just jump in and have a conversation and share files and set up a profile, and it's all free. I just love that. Um, <clears throat> And then I'm just mentioning plugins in general because literally every single um, thing that you could possibly think of that you might need or want on your website is available as a plugin. You can just search for it in Google. So for products, um, there are several different ways, obviously, that you can create digital products for an online business. And I'm just listing some of them here. These are the ones that I would tend to use. So recording a call like we're doing today, um, the component of this that is just audio, and then of course there's the webinar component that I actually really hope I'm recording right now <laughs> as I'm saying that. I'm going to just pop back to my main screen and take a look. Because this is the first time I've been able, yes. Can you see that? It says recording. So, oh, that's awesome. I'm happy. Okay. <clears throat> So recording calls, um, having group forums that so you can actually sell um, having a group forum where people can come in and participate in something that you are providing. A PDF downloadable reports is another thing that you can sell, and um, as well as an email email course through usually through an autoresponder, but there are different ways of doing that as well. So these are the different types of products that you can create and. And seriously, all of these you can do without any additional cost. So different methods for these different types of products can be done through, well, I've mentioned BB Press before, um, the Bridge Conference lines I've mentioned. And um, I use something called WordPress Easy Sign Up in some of my, um, actually, on the bit.ly, um, on the sales page for this event, there was a little box at the bottom where you just typed in your name and email address. And that was an easy sign up. And it, it just works in the background and sends me a private email. It doesn't take, I don't think it forwards you somewhere, but it doesn't um, have anything really complicated in the background and it's not working simultaneously with MailChimp. So it's a bit manual, but it's super simple to use. So if you want to just add something quick that you want to be able to deliver to someone, that's one way to do it. Um, and then there's, of course, autoresponders that you can use through MailChimp. And um, I mentioned PayPal because in PayPal, when, you, when someone makes a purchase, you can forward them over to a members area on your website or a place where they can download the actual PDF. Um, so you don't really need to go through an entire shopping cart um, model. You can simply use PayPal and, and forward your client to the product that you're selling for them. And then um, another way that you can manage the delivery is through something called either, well, either payloads payload or click to sell. They both offer affiliate programs. 
And in some ways, they're similar to how um, ClickBank is created. But it's a little bit more like um, they have a lot more of in the affiliate background, but you can also list all of your product in there and um, create PayPal buttons and, and all of that good stuff. So um, both of those are, you can sign up for a completely free membership. I've been in their program forever and I only pay something when I sell something. So there's, there's no ongoing fees like there are with the other affiliate programs. Um, Oh, I've got a question on here that I'm going to just try to pick up quickly from Ruth. Just a second. Um, oh, Ruth. Okay, I'm going to save this to the end if you don't mind. Yeah, okay. absolutely. I'll grab that at the end. Thanks. <laughs> I, I, and, I, I um, might not still be here because it's really late oh, here where I am. So, but oh, I'm, I'm doing the best. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Will you be able to listen um, to the I, recording? Yeah, if I have the app, if you send the link to it, sure. I will. Thanks. Absolutely. Okay. I will. So, yeah, if you need to drop off at all, even, Ruth, that's just fine. Um, this is going to be all recorded, including, like, the visual part of it. So, yeah, if you, anytime, okay? Okay, thank you. Whatever suits you. Okay, <laughs> you're welcome. The visual part of mine hasn't changed for a long time. Pardon me? Is that, the visual part is just has been, con hasn't changed for a long time. Is that right? It hasn't? Is that right? It keeps saying continued education. Mm. Okay. Just so you know. And is anyone else seeing the same thing? Were you seeing screens changing? Oh, look okay. at somebody else they have. So what is the matter with mine? Hmm. So I just turned to continued education. I was at delivery a second ago. Were you seeing delivery before? It's just been Ruth? this blue. Yeah, they're all blue. Oh, so maybe I just didn't look close enough. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's very possible. I'm tired. It's been a really yeah. hot day. <laughs> so, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Well, what? no, it's fine. That's fine. <laughs> okay. Got it. Good. They are. I see. I see what you're saying. Yep. Yeah. They are. <laughs> okay. In many ways, they look exactly the same. <laughs> okay. Not, maybe the I next time I'll change color. Okay. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's all good. Okay, that's great. That's great. Okay, so um, so moving on to continued education. So one of the big things for me, just as a personal, like this is my personal style. I'm always looking for opportunities to learn or expand in another in another way. So I spend a lot of time in online teleseminars. I used to go to a lot of live events, and I still do, but not as much as I used to. And um, I have my pulse on, or my finger on the pulse of a whole bunch of different, um, I guess, gurus in the industry, and um, and I attend paid and, and unpaid teleseminars. So other things that I do to, um, um, I guess, move forward within my business is do the mastering, masterminding component. Absolutely love masterminds. In fact, I own the website domain name I love masterminds.com just because I love it so much, <laughs> and. Um, Sometimes I work off-site. That kind of just gives me different space, head space. I have accountability partners. And um, it's kind of funny how I've laid this out, but I mentioned this earlier, how I use long-distance cards for jumping onto these online teleseminars and part of the masterminding just to keep my costs low. And, um, and I take notes with WordPad, so just something really simple. Okay. The next piece is data protection and storage, something that I think is really important for small business owners. And um, I've been caught in this trap more than once <laughs> where I don't have a really great backup system. And you know, I, I buy some new computer equipment and, and I don't take the extra time to set up the systems. And you know, coming from the corporate world, you kind of um, you get so used to someone else taking care of this kind of thing. And it's... Uh, it, when when it falls onto your shoulders, the responsibility is there. But I think, like a lot of things, like insurance, maybe we just assume it's going to be fine until it isn't fine. So something that I've done recently is I've installed SugarSync. It looks like it's designed for kids or something, but it's uh, it backs. It doesn't just back up all of my information. It's constantly syncing my information from my PC and my laptop and um, 
and my BlackBerry. And so I can open the data files, the exact same data file that I'm working on on my PC. I can close it there and open it up on my laptop without having to um, save it onto a flash drive or any other kind of fussy things. Plus, I can also access this information through a web browser and, um, and log into my account and grab my files from there too. So this has been a huge lifesaver for me after moving from, um, I actually transitioned through three different laptops this last year. So it's been a great transition from, or saving time saver for me. Just reinstall SugarSync and my files are back on my computer again. Um, and this one is free for the first five gigabytes of storage, which is fairly significant. There's um, Dropbox, and I think they, they have a free package for two gigabytes, but five gigabytes of sugar sink. Um, I use AVG Antivirus. They have a really robust um, free version, and I've been using it for nine, nine or ten years now. And I've used other programs in between. You, when you first buy a computer, you have software already installed, and, and I found them to be cumbersome. This one just runs nice and quietly in the background, doesn't take up a lot of um, energy, I suppose. And um, I set up some scheduled backups. I do use a USB flash drive for um, little files that I want to transfer back and forth or throw something into my purse while I'm going to meet with a client or things like that. I try to store my pictures on Flickr instead of in SugarSync because they take up lots of space, and I don't want to use up that entire five gigabyte of space. And I also have Windows SkyDrive as an option for storing things that I might want to share. Oh, the other cool thing, if you downloaded the worksheets today, um, I just right-clicked on my f something in my file folder, and I copied and pasted that into the email today. And that just created a public link from my computer to, from that file that you ended up downloading created a public hyperlink just for that one unit. I don't know if that's confusing or not, but you, know, you go into it another time. Um, Laura, I'm going to get to that question at the end of the call, okay? And moving on to productivity tools. Um, I've chosen to use Mozilla Firefox just because it seems to work with most online, uh, online teleseminars and meetings. It, the interface seems to work the best. What I've also noticed is that people who view my website, 80% um, of them are using Firefox. So it must, I'm not sure if it's the most popular, but it is a, it's really high up in uh, usability, I suppose. So that's the one that I use to help make my, my browsing experience easier. I use Google Sync to sync my, my calendar um, on my BlackBerry to my Google Calendar online. And then that, hypothetically, will, will also work together with the client calendar booking system that I have. It isn't, I'm not sure it is at the moment. And then um, I also mentioned the Adobe Reader and Voice earlier. And just using little tools that I already have on my BlackBerry, so whatever your smartphone is, there's going to be notes and calculators and other tools that you can use to just make your life simpler. And then find the right way to transfer that over um, to your computer so you can use it. Whew, I'm really surprised and I'm happy. <laughs> I know I went through this really fast, but this is going to give us an opportunity to answer some questions. Um, so what we went through today was communication, creation and writing, the marketing, advertising and PR, customer management, website and design, product and delivery, continued education and development, data protection and storage, and the productivity tools that I use. And I wanted to mention this forum that, I'm, that I am creating right now. There's going to be inside of it, there will be video how-tos. Um, PDF download tutorials and some group support. So all of these things that we talked about today um, sometimes take a little bit of time to get used to. They're different, you know, all the different programs have, you know, they create questions. There's a little bit of learning curve with all of them. So there will be videos to get you started on how to use them. Even things like this um, meeting burner we're using today, it's taking, it's taken me a little while to figure out how to use it. Although it's good, I think it's working really well. Um, there's always a learning curve. So just wanted to mention that about the, um, 
about the forum. And um, what I didn't mention yet was about the ebook that, that I would kind of promised to have ready already this week, but I've been having some issues with getting uh, finishing up with the editing of it. So I'm hoping that maybe after we do some questions today, um, I'll be able to kind of tie up those loose ends and send, uh, send off that final version to my editor and then have this, this book ready for you right away. And it will have all of the hyperlinks and, uh, and ultimately cover everything that we've done in the call today, but just give you the quick um, links to it. Plus, it also tells the story of how, um, and you might even be able to tell me if this is useful to you, but <laughs> I wrote the entire, I kind of documented what I did two weeks ago when I first had the idea for this specific book and documented exactly what steps I took to get to the launch phase, um, to finishing the sales page, to, to getting the ebook created, etc. So if you think that might be useful, um, maybe you can let me know about that as well. So um, I'm ready for questions if anyone else is ready to jump in. I can start with, um, whoops. I can start with Laura's first question, which was, um, can you define a mastermind? So, and then I'm going to come right back to Ruth as well. So, um, mastermind, it's kind of the concept that, um, oh my goodness, I just lost his name. Oh, and Cassia, yes, all of the links that I've mentioned are in the ebook. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, the ebook is about 40 pages long right now, so we've got, um, uh, but yeah, all of the links are there, absolutely. And um, so masterminding is this concept that was created by, um, why can't I remember his name? Um, hold on just one quick second. Sorry about that. Okay, long old um, concept in Think and Grow Rich, the guy who wrote Think and Grow Rich. Um, he, um, what he did was he studied a whole bunch of different business owners and found out very successful business owners like um, Ford and and this was back in the maybe the 20s or the 30s. And what he did was he found out what it was that they were doing to create successful businesses. So they, um, what he found was that they all had a small group of people that met on a very regular basis. And um, I think the phrase that you might be familiar with is um, when two or, two or more minds join together, there's a third mind. And, and what, what I find is that for myself in my business is that when I'm working with, um, when I come together with other business owners who are working towards their success, um, talking about my business with them and sharing and listening to what's going on with their business helps me move forward in another level. So you've been doing this within your business, I'm sure, in different ways, but it may not have been structured as a mastermind. So you may not have had that, um, that regular ongoing you know, weekly or monthly commitment to meet and come together to move your business forward. Does that help? Awesome. Good. Good, good. Um, so I was going to go back to Ruth's question. You wanted, Ruth wanted to know um, how you find out uh, what your prospective clients' needs are. And you, you mentioned something about something you yeah. can check on Facebook, book, and I just wanted yeah. to just say that again. Yeah. And I think there's other ways you can do this too, not necessarily just in Facebook, but um, here's what I do. <laughs> when I'm in a forum, I, I kind of listen. I mean, obviously, I'm watching conversations, not literally listening, but I kind of put on my listening ears. And um, I see where people's pain points are. I hear them talking about something that seems to be a struggle. And if, they are, um, if there's some way that I can help, I... I kind of make a note of it, and I use. I sometimes I even jot down the words that they're using to 
to describe how painful it is. And, um, and then I see how they look for help. And I guess I just pay attention so what, to those types of things. So what Go kind ahead. of forums, what kind of, could you give an example of what kind of forums you would sign? I mean, you're, obviously your business yeah. is different than mine, but just, just to give an yeah. example from your business, like how would you find these Absolutely. things? Yeah, for me, it's going into groups for, um, like for entrepreneurs, especially startups. And um, because I'm often looking at ways that, that they can create better systems in their business. Of course, in the past, my business was primarily about accounting systems. So I would be looking at people who were um, needing help with different bookkeeping tasks and um, asking questions about taxes and, um, and then anything that was a QuickBooks form I would be part of. So I would just... Sometimes I would just randomly answer questions within the forum. If I could help with just a one or two line um, answer, I'll do that. And then if okay. it doesn't always happen, but you know, you kind of just get you, you can sometimes build a rapport within a forum by contributing that way. Does that make sense? Okay. That's, thank you very much. Yeah. That was helpful. Oh, you're welcome. Do you have any other questions? Oh, can we do a search in Facebook for these forums? I know that you can do a search in Twitter, actually. Where was this? Um, oh, oh, oh. Um, I might be able to get the tip to you after this call. There was something. I wish I had that resource available. But the, one way you can do this is you can go to search.twitter.com, and you can search for specific keywords in there. And you can see what conversation is happening in Twitter. And you can jump into the conversation at any point reply to someone, get into the conversation. So that's one way. Facebook groups. You know, you should be able to search for groups. Yeah, obviously you can. Just go into that search bar at the top and, you know, that main search bar that you see in Facebook. And um, let me see, maybe I have Facebook open right now on my computer. If I don't, I will get it open. Facebook. So right up here, if there was a group, what might I want to do? Um, entrepreneur. So there's all of these groups here right now, and I could just I could just join them and get into conversation. Does that help? Uh, yes. <laughs> I didn't even realize Facebook had groups. <laughs> Light bulb moment. <laughs> yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah, there is a topic, there is a group, uh, probably, you know? I mean, there's going to be, there's going to be a cat group or something. Oh, there's my catch-up data because I'm part of it. Um, I'm going to say cat. Yeah. You know, so if you have a personal interest in something and you just want to be part of it, that might work too. So you just go to newsfeed and then yeah, I'm a little older than the average person here, so I <laughs> no, no, yeah, it's just the main just that main page when you first log in, right at Facebook.com, and then this search panel that's right across the top. Wow. You just type, yeah. Wow. I mean I can type your name right here and it shows you, but I can also type for um yeah, groups. Oh, you've got me in there? Oh, good grief. Yeah, I do. <laughs> right there. Portland, you, isn't it? Yeah? <laughs> okay. Oh, that's Felicity. No, so, no I'm, I'm Ruth. Oh, this is Ruth that's asking the question. Okay. And it was Felicity that originally asked. No, Felicity okay. asked the question, well, too. Yeah, that's right. Maybe I don't have you. But that's okay. <laughs> okay, if so... If you put my last name, I uh, did have me. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I just have to spell it right. Um, or you put in Ruth Jerusalem, you'd probably have me too. Is this you right here? No. Where? Oh, we have several. No, that's me. Oh, there that's we go. Me, Jerusalem. Here we go. The one on the I'm going to ask. To ask. <laughs> okay. Yep. Right. There we go. So what else do we have for questions? Um, I, 
Okay, Cassia. Okay. So Cassia is asking me about starting an online business and where to go from there. Um, hold on a minute. Let's see. I just lost the question. I'm so sorry, Cassia. Um, I think initially the question might be what it is that you um, what it is that you're interested in, what area of expertise you might have already, um, what it is that you would like to share, I suppose, share with the world. So it may be it may be going through some kind of process and actually deciding who you would like to work with and then what your best skills and talents are, and then, um, and then how you can share them. And there's going to be, there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. Um, and then I suppose once you have that, that part of it answered for yourself, then you can find the right ways to deliver the right product to your ideal customer. I'm not sure if that helps you. Um, nope, I'm going to come back to that. Um, I'm not sure if that helps you, Cassia. Can you maybe just let me know in the chat if that helps at all? Okay. And if you do have any questions for me anytime, please just email me. That I would love to hear uh, hear from you and find out what, what you're um, going through and if there's some way I can help to get you started. That would be great. Um, okay. Any other questions? Anyone else want to pop, pop in and ask? I actually really like this little chat feature. <laughs> Would I ever pay for a service instead of use it for free? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. But I, but I think that if there's a really good comparable one that is that does have a, a fee structure, or it has a not like that has a free structure <laughs> instead of a fee structure. Um, while I'm getting started, I think it's best to use that free option. And then as I grow, if I can grow with that same product line, I think that's a brilliant way to do anything in business. So, if you're not generating a lot of revenue online, I think the best way to get started is using free tools, and then allow yourself to grow. Um, it's just that. Hmm, with my personal experience, I was running my other business and it was quite safe for me to stay in that other realm where I was making decent money um, providing consulting services to my clients. And, but I wanted to really get my feet wet into this other arena, but I truthfully wasn't really selling anything. So it was silly for me when I was spending, um, you know, spending over $500 a month on my online services, just specifically um, hosting services and website domain names. I was spending over $500 a month on that. And it was because I kept buying a new one with a package, and so I, was, I had um, hosting services in all these different places. Every time I had a new idea, I would, I would make a new website for it, and I would host it somewhere else. And, and then when I, when I found HostGator, I realized that I had, was, had the ability to bring all of my do, domain names into one hosting account. And um, it ultimately just forwarded all of those domain names into one place, and I'm able to host everything from with one within one login. And it saved me time, a learning curve, and so much money. So um, I've become more passionate about just keeping those costs really low, um, but not to the detriment of the client experience. Um, I did not answer your question, Laura. I'm sorry, I missed that. And I think it's because this is scrolling just a little bit too fast. Um, okay. I'm really missing a lot in this chat. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. So what did I just, I saw something about, oh my goodness. When I scroll up, I'm missing. A little bit earlier. Did I ask you the question about when to hire out versus do it yourself? 
Oh, I didn't answer that question. And um, really, I think I think there's, in my personal opinion, when I decide to hire it out is when I'm not having fun with it anymore. So that's one big thing. Um, and if I just really don't know it well, you know, if it's something that I'm just struggling to learn, and maybe it doesn't end up coming out looking beautiful, or at least comparably beautiful to other, someone else's product, then I think it's definitely time to hire out. And um, actually, I do have um, one of the participants in the call today is my is my brand new VA Brandy. So um, I'm really grateful to have her here as a support. And we're just starting out this week, so it's going to be interesting to see how that goes too. I'm really happy about it. Um, pay for service. What else am I missing? Um, well, just scroll to the bottom again. So, Laura, you mentioned, let's see. Yeah, with the four hour work week. Yeah, it's exactly that. It's it's um do what you're good at and then outsource the rest. Absolutely. Especially if you have a profit model already in line. Um not to say that you have to have the money first before you do it, but make sure that if you're hiring out that you actually are gonna be generating your income within, you know, two months, three months. It's, it's not a wise business decision to be throwing good money after bad. So if, if anyway, that's my point on that one. Yeah, you're right, Laura. It is fun for me, and it's very likely pain for a lot of other people. That's true. That's absolutely true. So do we have any other questions at all? We have 10 minutes left on the call. Yeah. Yeah, it is a good trade-off, um, DIY versus handing over control. I love that. I love that. And there are a lot of people who are are um, quite happy doing the DIY side of it, and others that just aren't. That's brilliant. There's also something to be said about having um, having a working knowledge of how your business is running and then handing it over to someone else. So not to say that you should have to do everything, but you know, with your... I mean, especially with almost all aspects of your business, but one that I'm really passionate about is the accounting side. So not to say that you should be doing all of your own bookkeeping, but if you um, take on, if you just hand over your bookkeeping to someone else and let them do it, and you don't really analyze it, you don't take time to manage that part of your business, it can slip away from you really quickly. So assuming that someone else, a bookkeeper, is taking care of your bookkeeping does not mean that you're, the finance side of your business is taken care of. And it goes with all aspects of your business. So the same thing with your website. If you, have, if you have a website designer who's taking care of it for you, it doesn't mean they're looking out for your best interests. They may not um, be search engine optimizing your website. Um, it may not be user friendly to your clients. And it may be. But it's, you know, it's important as a business owner to actually to know how your business is running. To be able to even step into all business roles if needed even if you don't like it. So I know that can be a big experiment for some business owners to kind of get to the front lines and work as a customer service rep for a day or a week. Um, good stuff. Anything else? No. Okay. All right, so um, I just want to thank you then for spending time with me today. And if there's anything I can do to help, you know where to find me, laureleehutton.com. Um, you can find out about some of the other services that I'm offering, and I'm going to send you out um, follow-up information about the forum and, um, and this book when it's ready, when it's finally edited, which hopefully will be in the next few days or week or something. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, I'd love to keep in touch with you. So thank you, thank you, and um, and have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, bye-bye.
Thanks very much. Okay.